So, it all started with this meme. Choosing three songs from a random Spotify playlist and creating characters based off of that. Well, the first song, Better Man by Taylor Swift, resulted in this very bookish kind of character who has had her heart broken in the past. And this song by Ed Sheeran, Castle on the Hill, resulted in this carefree, fun-loving, van-lifer guy. Now it's time to depict their relationship, which is based off of I'm Yours by Alessia Cara. And if you've never heard that song, it is about a girl who has been hurt in the past and is kind of mad that she's falling for this really nice, sweet guy. <laughs> this is one of the reasons that I did this because all three of these songs went so very perfectly together and immediately started to tell a story of who these characters were. So to start off with this picture, I wanted to use a reference, but not just any reference. It can be hard to find photos that fit exactly what you have in mind. And a tool that I really like to use is an app called Magic Poser. I don't know if it's available on Android, but it is available for iPad. Uh, they have changed it to where you do have to pay for some of their assets now, but you can add figures and pose them in any way that you want. Like I said, they, they've added some paid features where you can even change like the body type of the assets of the characters that you place in the scene. What I really like about this is that you can place the characters in the poses that you really want to, them to be in and then you can find the right angle that you want the picture, the, you know, the composition of your picture to be in. So this is the picture that I ended up settling on. So, uh, the girl behind the counter of her bookstore and the guy leaning over it and being very charming. So I took this image, saved it from the app, and then put it into Procreate. Here's where I played around a lot with Procreate's perspective tools. Like, I am not an expert in perspective. That is still something that I am trying to figure out and really learn. But this gave me a good way to build out the scene around them and build out the structure of the bookshop around them. I also had this really cool template, which is technically a comic page template, but it um, it splits the page up very well. It's, it's actually a brush that I found. It kind of helps you to split the page up and see like where the focal points are and how well balanced the page is. So I really like that feature. So I definitely had delusions of grandeur when it came to this little bookshop here. I really like pictured it as being like two stories and you know with books on a second level and everything. I Don't ask me why, I have a thing for bookstores and libraries like that. But I really didn't feel comfortable trying to figure all of that out in this picture so it ended up a lot simpler than what I had in mind. But I think it, in the end, it kind of gave the uh, vibe that I was wanting. So that's all that matters in the end. <laughs> and so I know that some people use 3D references like this to trace the characters. And I just don't feel comfortable doing that. I think it, you know, it helps to train your technique to identify the correct shapes and how the characters are posing, you know, whenever you can draw from the reference instead of just tracing over it. So the girl was a little challenging. I think I, for some reason, I did not draw the other side of her foot that's behind the counter. I should have. That would have made life a lot easier for me, but I didn't because the reference didn't have her other foot, really. So this might be a good time to tell you that I think I've figured out names for these characters. I think that the girl's name should be Liz or Lizzie. 
I'm leaning more towards Liz though. And the guy, I'm really leaning towards the name Andy. He just, I don't know, he seems like an Andy to me. Let me know what you think of the names if you, and if you uh, have any better suggestions down in the comments. So as I've said in this series of videos, I pictured the girl Liz as being very bookish, that she works in a bookshop, maybe she owns the bookshop, I haven't quite decided yet, that Andy is very much a adventurous guy, he loves the outdoors, he has kind of made it his profession in becoming like a van life YouTuber and shares his adventures with vlogs and, and things like that as he travels across the country. And so my idea of them meeting is him stopping off in the town where Liz's shop is and not finding any other place to park his van for the night, asks her if he could park his van in the parking lot of her shop overnight. And, you know, she would be very dubious. He might have to plead his case <laughs> of it and in, that would be the start of their relationship, of her being not quite sure of this very nice and charming guy and him really trying to lay on the charm, mostly just so that he can park his van, but maybe also because he is kind of interested in this girl. Again, there was only so many details that I could include in this picture, like this this little table here. I knew that there needed to be like more than just, you know, a rack of bookshelves in this shop, that, you know, there needed to be little displays here and there, but, you know, there was only so much that I could fit in this frame here, but I did want to have like a little display here, maybe of local authors or something, you know, local books. And I don't know if I got the perspective 100% right on these books that are on this table, but I tried. I really tried. And you know, I kept forgetting about this computer here. I know that you need something to handle transactions, but for some reason I kept forgetting about it and it disappears several times throughout this video. Another reason why this video is taking so long to get out is that I kept having problems with my iPad. It's, it's an older iPad and it just was like, it, the storage is full, this is full, this is that, you know, it was not recording as I needed it to so I ended up having to clear out a lot of stuff just so I could finish this picture. You know if nothing else really comes from this video series I I have to say, I do really like the color palettes that I have put together, especially Liz's color palette. It's just, I don't know, it's very nice. It's very, it hits that that kind of bookish vibe. Sometimes it's, it's hard to get colors to go together in the way that you want them to, but I really, I love the way that all these colors came together. So another thing that I do several times and um, is a technique that 
I have found that makes it very easy to add textures to clothing or to different objects and shapes is to get a textured brush. Like this is actually one that I custom made for myself so that she could have like this cable knit sweater type of pattern on her blouse for you just draw the texture on a separate layer and then you select the the item or the section of the item. It really helps if you did something like I did with her where the line work there is uh, clear lines and you know with no gaps or anything between like her sleeves, her collar and like the uh, body of her shirt where you can select each of those individually. And so then you can take that layer of texture and then you can use the warp tool to kind of shape it the way that you want it to be, how it would fall, you know, how it would curve around the body, etc. cetera. Um, and then you can select the, that shape, that, you know, section that you want it to be on and hit select and then you hit invert. Then you select that layer of texture and then you can just move it away and it will leave uh, that pattern in perfectly in shape with whatever you've layered it on top of. I hope I explained that in the right way. <laughs> it's easier to do than it is to explain, but I hope that, it, uh, that I explained it properly. And that's also a technique that I used a lot with with the shading as well, with adding light and adding shadows to the backgrounds. So yeah, in hindsight, I don't know that a bookstore would really have a lot of books behind the counter of, you know, the, the pay counter, but it was a way that I could add a lot of books. And, you know, I, I have a feeling that there would be some, maybe like the rarer books or, you know, um, books that are in high demand that there's not a lot of that people would, you know, need to come up and ask about. I don't know, something like that. Finding the colors for the actual bookshop was a bit of a challenge, um, but one feature of Procreate that I really like is that if there is a picture that you like, especially if you're like, I love the colors in this picture, you can uh, drag and drop that picture into your color palettes and it will pull the colors from that picture. And that's, that's what ended up helping me find the right color for the walls of this bookshop. I think I got it from a picture that I took when I was in Ireland, I think of the Cliffs of Mower. One of the most fun things about this uh, illustration was playing around with the light coming in through the windows. That was really fun. So the 
background was a bit tricky too because you know you don't want to you don't want to take away from the foreground and the focus of the picture but i also didn't want to just have a blank window of you know there's nothing outside of this shop kind of thing so i kind of initially thought that this would be a town that would be near the ocean that that would be a reason why andy would be coming here but you know how close to the ocean is this bookshop can you see it from the window kind of thing i don't know and so i was i played around with several different compositions you know of course i had to make it so that you know the parking lot was big enough that andy would be like asking if he could stay there So it was just playing around with a bunch of different shapes. I didn't, like I said, I didn't want it to be overly complicated, but just give like the impression of, you know, some land masses in the background. I, I had thought about, you know, putting other buildings that would be in this little town, but I ultimately decided against that because it was just, that would be way too much detail and it would really pull away from the inside of the shop. And, I didn't want to do that. In the end, I did make it so you could see a little bit of the water, but you know, ultimately you, you can't really tell that's what it is. I also played around with the sky a bit and tried to, you know, add some lighting and effects, but it, it really was just too much detail for what I was going for. So one thing about this illustration is I didn't want to get lost in the shading. I didn't want to like perfectly blend the shadows and the lines because I knew I was just gonna get lost in that myself if I did. And I really wanted to keep this style as simple as I could. So, you know, that was, that was a, that was an exercise in self-control and restraint, honestly, because it can be very difficult to pull back from all of that. perspective isn't perfect in this picture, but I am kind of uh, proud of the books here, which I've realized I didn't get the footage of me putting all of the books on this shelf here, but it was really just a, a matter of drawing a line of books with uh, the book stack brush that I have and then um, shifting and distorting them until they fit in the perspective. As I said, it was really fun to play around with these shadows and shading. In oh, and I think I lost the footage of it, but the logos on the shop window and on Andy's shirt. I actually did on a Photoshop-like program that I have on my laptop called Affinity Designer, and that made it very easy to manipulate the text. Procreate has added some text tools, but not as many as a program uh, like Photoshop or Affinity would have, so it was just easier to get the, the word art and, you know, design the way that I changed the font on Andy's shirt too, to one that I think kind of fits the more, you know, rugged vibe better. And if you can't read the name of Liz's bookshop, it is Second Chapter New and Used Books, which, you know, I thought was appropriate for her, her character. And one of the last things I added was that computer that I kept forgetting about. <laughs> Thank you.
And I think this final detail here, or one of the, the one of the final details here that I added of this kind of glow around the characters really added that little, you know, pop of, of realism and really added to this uh, style. And, you know, making it subtle too, you know, not too bright, but just the right amount was a bit of a challenge, but I ended up being very happy with how it looked in the end. And one more thing. A little sign that says local authors. decided to add a little border to see how that would look. This is the end result. Overall, I'm very happy with how this turned out. It's not perfect, you know, I still need to work on my, you know, drawing architecture and perspective, but I am very happy with how this turned out. And I also threw in the version without the border just to get the full effect. So thank you for your patience. Thanks for watching my video. If you'd like to see more of my art, I have more videos on this channel. If you'd like to see how I came up with the designs for these characters, I will have those videos listed in the description and on the end card. And if you'd like to see more of my art, I have a Redbubble page that I will list below. Thank you so much to my patrons, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.